once again, Salam family, and welcome to the Jesus Revealed podcast series. I'm your host, Sintia Mube, and we're in day five. And in day five, we're looking at the specific scriptures that look at Jesus calling his first set of disciples. And for this, I'm joined again by Pastor Adrian. Pastor Adrian, thank you so much again for being with us. Well, it's amazing to be with you, Zintle. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's an awesome journey. And as we revealing Christ to ourselves and to our church and to family and friends beyond just Siloam, we know it's going to just be a blessing to them. Yeah, no, and we hope so too to everyone that's either listening on, on various podcast channels or they're watching us on our, on our streaming platforms or just on YouTube and Facebook. So, Pastor A, today we're looking at Jesus calling his first set of disciples. And yeah. our scriptural references is, is Matthew 4 uh, from verse 18 22, Mark 1 from verse uh, 1 to, to, well, from 16 to 20, I beg your pardon, and from Luke 5 from verse 1 to, to 11. Now, Maybe right off the bat, Pastor A, we have seen the term disciple, I guess, within the, the Gospels or, or the New Testament, first being applied with John the Baptist's disciples. Yeah. And now we are seeing it with Jesus now calling his first set of disciples. Now, from a 101 point of view, what is a disciple? Okay, that's an awesome question. And, and again, as a Bible teacher, I think it's always important to take a step back. Yeah. Because you have to look at the scriptures as a whole. Nothing stands on its own and nothing um, is not connected to anything else. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a thread. Um, we, in, as Bible school students, theological students, you'll always be taught about the golden thread. Yeah. Um, and again, when we look at the Bible and the Word of God, it's called history, but it's His story. Yeah. Um, so if you take a step back and you go to the Old Testament, you don't see disciples. True. Um, you don't see this term disciple or discipleship. Uh, you see the tribes, you see leaders, you see authoritative mm -hmm. figures. We are now again introduced in the New Testament to a brand new term and a yeah, brand new yeah, understanding. Yeah. Um, and the word disciple in the Greek, which is the original language of the New Testament, is mathetes. And, and that basically means one who is a pupil or a student of a teacher. Now, yeah. you would find it's called the disciple of John, and now mm -hmm. you're referring to it being called the disciples of Jesus, um, with the advent of the Pharisees and the advent of the Sadducees and the actual schools of learning, where you had the synagogues popping up during that 400 years of silence, mm -hmm. um, during that 400 years between Malachi and, the, and uh, uh, Matthew, you see centers of learning popping up. Um, you know, you see the sentence of them being taught the law, uh, being prepared by rabbis, being yes. prepared by teachers. Now you see the people that would follow a teacher would be called a mm -hmm. disciple. It's basically just saying someone that's a, a, a student, someone that's a follower of a specific teacher. Yeah. So when we look at that word, that is what it means. Mathetes means a student, a follower, uh, someone that has a teacher above them that has that's there to be imparted and to be impacted with learning sure. um, with certain wisdoms um, that they have to carry them forward yeah um, so yeah. we are introduced to this brand new word um, we introduced um, to this brand new understanding um, and then taking it from where Jesus comes into the picture where he then actually sets a, a different now thought pattern around what it means yeah. to be a disciple it's not just you learning stuff and then taking that knowledge and then going with it and you being propped up in knowledge. But it's an actual lifestyle now mm. that he wants you and I to follow. Um, that he wants you and I to actually live out, um, you know, as his sons and daughters. Great. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Pastor. And I, I think maybe before we get on to the next question, I want to stick on that whole thing of following then and following Christ, especially when we look at maybe the examples that Jesus set in terms of what he did as someone then who led or insisted that people should follow him. So if you just for briefly then can, can talk around those, those steps of what it means yeah. then to, to follow Jesus. So, so Jesus had two kinds of disciples. Yeah. He had his core group, which were his 12, yeah. and then he had his larger group. Um, which at some point, I think, numbered in the 500. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so he had these various groups of disciples. 
Um, and again, the difference with Jesus' disciples and the disciples of the day, the context mm. of the New Testament um, and the context of even the, the religious structures of the day with the schools of teaching, whether you were Pharisee or Sadducee or you were a scribe, uh, you know, with these different schools of teachings within the religious understanding of the day in the context, Jesus' disciples are not just there to be taught something, to learn something. They're actually there to live what he teaches and love how he lives. Because Jesus then takes us further in Matthew chapter 16 and 24, and he says, if any man desires to come after me, if the desire is to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, he says, you have to do the following. You have to deny yourself, you have to take up your cross, and you have to follow me. Yeah. And that is the pattern of Jesus' life. He denied himself, yeah. he took up his cross, and he gave himself for us. So in Jesus' understanding of what a disciple is supposed to be, it is definitely a person, a man or woman, a son, a daughter, whoever we may be, whatever our classification may be, that actually loves the way he lived. That takes his teachings, internalizes it, but more importantly, lives it out. And the major, major theme of Jesus' way of discipleship is for you and I to deny ourselves, mm. to take up our cross, and then to follow him. And there's various other things that goes with yeah, it, but I think yeah, that's yeah. the most basic <laughs> of the understanding. That's what I'll pass it. That was really, really helpful. Now, I just want to then look at the kind of people then that, that Jesus calls. Okay. Uh, I, I think... The, from what we see in, in, in these passages of Scripture, Simon Peter yeah. and, and, and Zebedee and all of them then were fishermen. Now, in the earlier point when you talk around what it means or what it meant to be a disciple, they, it, was, it, it seemed to be almost a, an elitist sort of thing, being, being a, a Pharisee or being a Sadducee. It, it's, it seemed very, very that, but now... Jesus then recruits someone that is a fisherman yeah. and he recruits, for example, Matthew and he recruits someone like Luke. Uh, just please just tell us around the kind of people then that, that Jesus calls or Jesus called. So I think it goes back again um, to what we just discussed. You know, when Jesus calls us, um, he calls us from every sphere of life. Yeah. Um, his instruction of being a disciple is activated by one phrase, and that is, follow me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, each of the different people that he went to, it was, follow me. Remember, there's a young man that comes to him and says, can I follow you? Yeah. And then Jesus says, well, if you want to follow me, I need you to go back. I need you to go and, um, no, no. I says, you need to come with me and just follow me. And yeah, then he says, yeah. no, but allow me to go back, Very, yeah. to go and First, bury somebody. Yeah. The one said, yes, and the yes, other yes, one yes. I had to do with, I want to say goodbye to my yeah, mom and my dad. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then Jesus said, no, that's not how it works. Mm. Um, he says, you have to follow me. So when Jesus comes and he calls fishermen, he calls tax collectors, uh, he calls um, a doctor, which was yeah, Luke. Luke. I yeah, mean, Luke yeah. is instrumental in writing uh, the book of Luke. Yeah. Luke is instrumental in writing the book of Acts. Yeah. Luke is instrumental in writing, um, you know, some of the other epistles of Paul because he was one of the travel mm -hmm. companions mm -hmm. of Paul. Um, so when Jesus calls us to follow him, he calls us out of every sphere of life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is no qualifier with Christ. Yeah. In, in what you've just mentioned with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and this thing of being taught the law and being taught a specific way of thinking in a specific school um, that you have to belong to. It's a status thing. Yes. You've mentioned it. Yes. Um, it's a status in understanding that only certain people from certain spheres or stretch yeah. of life yeah. can now yeah. be yeah. part of it. Um, you know, but Jesus comes and he finds a man that is fishing and he says, I want you to follow me. But then also he turns that man's life around and says, you are now a fisherman but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. And then he takes it a step further by showcasing that how will you become a fisher of men? Hmm. Um, you know, and you just, that I'm going to empower you. I'm going to give you an understanding beyond your education, um, beyond your 
um, you know, your level of living. Yeah. Yeah. Paul goes further to that. Paul goes further in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and he says to the Corinthian church, he says, God calls those things that are unwise. Yeah. He says the foolish things of this world. Uh, he says to confound the wise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. our understanding is that Christ calls us from wherever we are. Yeah. You know, he calls us to himself. He makes us part of his journey. He reveals himself in us and through us. And we don't have to qualify by way of financial and material things. We don't have to qualify by way of qualifications and educations and credentials. What qualifies us again, according to his understanding of discipleship and his teaching of discipleship, is you and I just denying ourselves. Yeah. Now, yeah. Peter took a long while to <laughs> deny himself yeah. because... The ruffian that he was, yeah. um, the quick tempered that he was, we saw him struggle with that, even yeah, whilst yeah, he yeah, was yeah, following yeah. Jesus. But then we see him become the apostle that speaks the first message and preaches the first message of repentance in the yeah, gospel yeah, yeah, that yeah. sets ablaze the world and brings then the church into birth. Um, so, yes, he calls us from wherever we are. Great. Thanks, thanks for that, Pastor. And now I, I just want to know then what it means then to be called by God okay. in, in, in that context. Um, I would think to be called by God is one of the most amazing experiences you can have. Yeah. Um, because like I said already, he takes you from where you are. Yeah. He doesn't give you a bar. He doesn't give you a standard. He doesn't say these are the con conditions to follow me. He calls you from where you are. He calls you from a place of maybe for some brokenness. He calls some from a place of strength. He calls some from a place of, of, of low self-esteem. And he calls some that might be prideful. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's no bar. There's no set criteria. There's no set conditions mm, for mm, the call mm. of God. And when we are answering the call of God, it's a call to change. Yeah. It's a call to transformation. Uh, it's a call to living not for ourselves, but living for his purpose. Yeah. It's a call for you and I to reveal the Christ as he's revealed to us. Mm. Um, it's a call for you and I to recognize as we are in this month of February and the way of, of new birth that 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 qualifies that. The old has passed away. Behold, yeah. all things have become yeah. new. It's that understanding that he calls us and he lives in the, on, in the inside of us and through us. Mm. Um, and he wants us to walk with him in a specific uh, you know, way, in a specific manner. Because he, and my understanding as I read the Bible, and my understanding of me maturing in Christ, he patterns for me what that calling is. So the calling yeah. will find each and every one of us at different places. Um, it will require different things from us. My calling is different from your calling. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody has to recognize that there are sacrifices attached to the calling. Um, there, are, there are a sacrifice of yourself attached. What that sacrifice is, is different for different people. Um, and you and I just have to heed the call. Um, you and I, again, Revelations chapter 3 and 20. Um, John the Revelator and the Isle of Patmos, he, he gives us major and wonderful revelation of the open heavens and then the yeah, seven yeah, yeah. Uh, churches and the seven lampstands and the seven angels and the, you know, all of these things. And Revelation 3 and 20 says, the Lord says, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. He says, if you open, if you respond to his calling, he will come in. He will dine with you, yeah, he says, yeah, and he will yeah, fellowship yeah. with you. And he makes then his dwelling with us. So whether you are called to ministry, like, like I'm sitting in that calling, or whether you're called in any other sphere, the understanding that we must have is he's calling us in fellowship with him. He's calling us to a life of transformation. He's calling us for his glory. Yeah. He's calling us for his purpose. He's calling us to impact the world as he impacted the world. That's, that's amazing, Pastor A. And just looking at these various passages now that, yeah. that we've looked at, looking at all the things that we've, that we've spoken about, 
what then would be those three lessons of, of Jesus calling his disciples, just based on what we have seen here? Well, I think across the question that you asked me about who does he call, yeah. um, you know, how is Jesus revealed in the calling of his disciples? The first lesson all of us must learn um, when he calls us is that being a disciple of Jesus the Christ is a change of and transformation of our minds yeah. and our thinking. Because Peter is called and Peter is finding himself in the boat. He sees the nets and they were fishing all night. And this is before he now fully steps yeah, into yeah. who Christ is and understanding that he's been called of Christ. And they're fishing all night. They're fishermen. They know exactly how to fish. It's not something that is foreign to them. And then Jesus says to them, you know, why don't you try throwing the, the net on the other side? Yeah. And they're like, you know, <laughs> we know what we do, yeah. but because you commanded, let's try this. Yeah. And then when it happens that the boats are overflowing and the nets are overflowing with fish, Peter then has this proper revelation of who yeah. Christ yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And he says then, but I am a sinner. Yeah. You know, and it gives us that that whole um, depiction of us recognizing that we have to change who we are. Yeah. yeah and Paul yeah. writes to the church at Rome and Romans chapter 12 and to all of us in verse 2. And he says that we are to be renewed by the transforming of our minds. The first lesson of discipleship is that and the call of to being disciple is he calls us to a change. Yeah. Change of thinking, transformation of the mind, breaking away from the patterns of the age breaking away from the paradigms of the old, breaking away from the framework of the old. Second thing is, it means that you and I have to leave the old life behind. Yeah. That's what it means. Peter and the other disciples, after Jesus' resurrection, um, they don't, they, they, they back at the, at the fishing waters. They back on the, on the lake fishing again. Um, and Jesus then comes to them and they, and they hear him call out to them and he comes and they come and they have a time of fellowship with him around fish that he prepared for them, you know, and the meal that he prepares for them. And Jesus then says to Peter, um, Peter, I need you to feed my lambs, yeah. feed my sheep, care for them. And Peter is then called, Peter, remember when I called you, I told you, I'm going to make you a fish of men. So you cannot go back to your old life once he has called you. You cannot be your old self once he has called you. I think Luke, being a doctor and a physician at that moment in time, he probably still followed his job in terms of what he was called to. But now Luke takes on this great calling and he becomes a travel companion of yeah. the Apostle Paul. He writes the book of Acts. He writes mm, Luke. Mm. He writes some of the epistles, you know, for Paul. So he becomes a travel coach. He leaves the old life yeah, behind. Thomas, yeah. um, who we seem to call the doubting Thomas. And I mean, Bishop Gans in our, in our yeah, Saturday yeah, yeah. teaching really, you know, reversed our minds on how we look at Thomas. Indeed, indeed. Um, he becomes an apostle that travels all the way from, uh, you know, from... from um, Galilee and Jerusalem travels all the way into India, yeah. um, you know, and becomes the apostle to that side of Asia, introducing the gospel. Um, uh, you know, so you see all of these men that comes from various parts of life, leaving the old life behind and they're following Christ. The third thing would be Christ then calls ordinary people mm. to do extraordinary things for him. And that's the most amazing thing that we can look at as disciples. He calls ordinary men and women, and he says, I've got an assignment for you. I've got a new way of life for you. Your life means more than what it means at this moment in time. And the beauty of that is that he says to us, I will equip you. It's not our equipping. Yeah. It's his equipping. And if we follow that, then we know we will do extraordinary things for the Lord. That's, that's really amazing, Pastor A. And just thank you so much for just unpacking just the end-to-end -end 
of what it means to be called by yeah. God and, and the implications of being a follower, true follower of, of, of Christ. So thank you, Pastor A, and, and God bless you. And thank you to everyone that was listening and, and viewing our day five of Jesus Revealed. God bless you. God bless you all.